All right, good morning. Um, I thought I'd do a review of one of the board games I bought recently. I thought I'd start with the Western Empires. Now, Western Empires is a remake, basically, of the old ha Avalon Hill civilization game, which has been around for oh, 40 years or more, and it stood the test of time. In fact, there's been a number of um, reiterations of the original Civilization game done by various companies. I've got one, by, I don't own the original by Avalon Hill, but I do have the Gibson Games one. Uh, excellent game, it stood the test of time. Uh, well, so good that this, this, this set's uh, now come out. Now, this has, a, this has added a lot more to the original Avalon Hill game of Civilization. It's not quite mega sib, but it's not bloody far off. And by the time it's finished, um, it's going to be big because this is called Western Empires, and they are currently working on a sister game, which is not going to be difficult to imagine. It's called Eastern Empires, which is going to uh, greatly enlarge this game, which is already huge. Anyway, let me just move this box out of the way. And this box is big and it's heavy. There is a lot of stuff in here. But we'll start off with some basics. Let me zoom out a bit. Can I zoom out? No, I'm going to zoom out as far as I can. I'm going to have to pull the camera back a bit. That's the map. But we'll have a look closer look in a sec. Let me just measure it. So no, I always like to know measurements of the map. Oh, it's in two pieces, by the way. You join them together. So, measurements, length is 41 inches or 104 centimetres, from top to bottom it measures 28 inches, 28 inches or 72 centimetres. So, there's your measurements right now. Come back in a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then, yeah, let's go down to it together. Now, go on a bit more. And the, to me, I mean, a board game's a board game. So everything revolves around the board. And if you've got a beautiful looking board, that, uh, that enhances the game. Um, well, just for me, and I can imagine just for most people. And this gate, this board is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's not um, covered with tables and charts and you know stuff what you what you you'll need in the game, but they haven't covered the board in it. But there is enough stuff on the board to let you play the game and, and, and play it quickly and easily. Now, let's see, you're looking there at. Italy there. So if I, I go around here, for instance, I come back to so I can see where you're looking. Here we've got one of the main factions in the game is Rome. They start here, as you would imagine in Rome. Um, we've got other provinces and you'll see that there's um, there's circles with numbers in twos, threes, there's ones and there's fours. That's the number of population units each of these particular areas can support. There's also other icons which you might know. We've got these black arches which represent cities. A city can be built there, uh, a city can be built at Neapolis, at Rome, etc, etc. They can be built in other spaces, but I'll go into that probably when we actually play the game rather than that. There's also, as you'll notice, there's a couple of volcanoes. There's one here, uh, Vesuvius, and one here on Sicily. What will that be? Will that be Etna? Stromboli? I can't remember which way around we go. But anyway, they can feature in the game when they draw cards, minor and major catastrophe cards. Every region's got its name, 
And that's about it. That's all the information that you really need. And it's on the map, and it keeps it all very nice. Now, if we go back to the top, you can see the original Civilization game, the map cut off somewhere around here. All this nothing north. But now we've got we've got Britain up there in the top northwest corner. We've got parts of Scandinavia. We'll go across northern Europe, all the way across to part of the Caspian Sea. Then we'll come down here. come down here <coughs> we've got other for instance Assyria is going to be here they'll start here various cities the spaces all the way down into Egypt now you'll notice here there's some white cities can you see yeah some white city squares spaces and some black ones the difference between the white ones and the black ones is the white ones on this green here are on a full plane of course, it's the narrow delta, isn't it? Um, if we get a bad flood, if you've got anywhere where there's these white city spaces, it's bad news for you because you're on a floodplain and you're going to suffer. Now, of course, Egypt always did, and I think still does, relies on the floods to, uh, to rejuvenate the soils on the banks of the river now. I sort of get some rich crops and things. But every so often, uh, the now gives them a bit more water than, the, than they need. And, and of course you get catastrophic flooding. Um, or they did in them days, it can be controlled a little bit more than I want to see in modern day. But back then, you wanted just enough water, you didn't want too bloody much. Otherwise you lost your cities and things, it caused chaos. So that's them. Now what else is around there? Well it tells you where all the u units start. We saw Rome, we saw where Assyria is, down here, I think you can, can you see, yeah, you can see Minoa, which is based on Crete, Nosos, etc. And there's, there's all the different civilizations, the Celts start up at the top of the map. But before we worry about that, I'll just stop the camera on the box and I'll show you some other stuff. Right, each faction has its own playboard. They're all identical, just different colours. This one happens to be Egypt. There's a space to put your ten, correction, your nine cities. You only ever get, have a maximum of nine cities and four ships. In your stock, I'll show you them tokens a little bit later, you get 55 population tokens. On the back of the token, again, which I'll show you, is treasury. There's some amphoras to note um, that the, the treasury, and basically they go into this side of the border, so you can spend them as cash. Why would you want to do that? Well, you need you need to have stock here. You can't have everything out on the board. You need stock here. For, for every city you own, at some point in the sequence of tech, you've got to pay two. You've got to pay two uh, treasury to the treasury. For each city, so you you would see if you've got forty cities, you're going to take eight population counters from here, flip them, and put them in your treasury. That's all that is. And the treasury can be used to buy things, but we'll worry about later. But all the cards are the same. You've got the sequence of pay of play. You've got tax collection to start with, population expansion, movement, conflict, city construction, trade card acquisition. Then you can trade amongst the, the nations, amongst themselves with trade cards. Calamity uh, selection and calamity resolution. That's when nasty things happen. Uh, special abilities, surplus population and city support. Civilization advances, acquisition, and then the EST alteration. I'll explain all that means later. But these are all your, your population boards. So we've got... Egypt, we've got Hatti, and they are the predecessors of the Hittites. Uh, so you might not have heard of Hatti, but you probably heard of the Hittites. We've got Assyria. We've got Carthage. Rome. Hellas. Minoa. I B. 
Xperia and finally the Kelps. So you've got nine. Now, these are pretty big. So as well as your map, you've got to find space on your table for all nine of these. And it's not as if you just need the space for just for these, because you, can put, you can't put everything on it, because they'll be getting trade cards, and they'll also be getting civilization cards, which need to be put close to it as well. So already this table, even though this table is five foot by three, the map near the other eight, I could move them back to the top corner and I could get a few of these in down the side probably. But that's, you know, that's still not enough space. Oh no, no, no. No, there's a lot more to come yet. So if I get them out of the way, we have what's known as the archaeological succession table. Try and get this in focus properly. Right, this lists all your civilizations and this is basically a racetrack you're trying to get your piece from the start all the way across here to the finish sounds simple but where the colors change for instance here this period you don't need any requirements this is the stone age your, your, your nation your, your, your tribe is just setting out on its journey you don't need anything in here but once you hit this line, the early Bronze Age, you have to have two cities. If you don't have two cities, you can't cross that line. If you have two cities, then you'll cross, but then you'll come to this next line, and you see it staggered for different, for different nations. To cross this line, you need three cities and three civilization advances. This is the Middle Bronze Age. Then we come to the late Bronze Age, you need three cities, three civilization advances, each worth 100 or more. So you can't just have the cheaper ones, you need reasonably expensive ones. And finally, we've got early Iron Age, you need more four cities, and the late Iron Age to get to the finish line, you have to have all that. Now this is the basic version. If we turn this over, This is the expert, invention, uh, expert version. Again, still in the Stone Age, no, no requirements, but early Bronze Age goes up to three cities and everything increases hugely. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a much longer game. For instance, to enter the early Iron Age here, you need five cities, 10 civil, uh, civilization advances, each worth 100 or less, and a total of at least 38 victory points in civilization advances. So, you know, that's going to take some time, the longer version of the game. But it gives you that option to use that. I'll show you this one. This one, they put this in the game, but it's a foretaste of what's to come because if I show you here, hope you can see that okay. This one is the basic version for when you've got both games so the eastern um the eastern empires the map will butt up to this one and it will stretch right across if you've got a table that big i haven't i don't know many people who would have but if you haven't got enough space already taken up but yeah you get another map just as big as this of these and you get some new civilizations now for the western they're all it's all the odd numbers but for the east, we've got Saba, Moria, Babylon, Dr what's that? Dravidia, Kushan, Persia, Nubia, Indus, and Parthia. Because the eastern map will stretch all the way across in the south to India, and including India, and north, so you're going to get... Uh, Afghanistan, I would imagine, Tibet, parts of, you know, a large part of Far Eastern uh, Russia, Northern Russia, well, modern day Russia, and then everything east of that, you know, because you've got the, the Babylonians, etc., the Persians, so you've got all the Middle East as well. So all these nations would come into play, so you'd end up with 18 civilizations. And of course, this is the basic version, you don't get the advanced version in this. Um, 
because on the other side of here is something we need which is the census but if you bought the other game you obviously you're going to get the advanced uh, succession table as well so if you wanted to play an even longer longer than the, I, I should have to think i'm on this one attack with 18 nations but there you go now we've got a census you need this so this is another huge piece of card which you've got to find space for because you've got to constantly update this however many people you've got out you've got to constantly update your census because this is this can be important for turn order and various other things so it's got to be kept up to date and so you, this needs its own space so a nice big another big board to go with the archaeological succession table uh, what else oh well the rule books are very nice you've got your first game which is just a little thin 12 pages and it gets you going on your first game with little or no fuss it tells you what you need to know surplus population that type of thing city construction and all that easy it gives you a and a little bit of a walkthrough for the first few turns perfect more games should do this a little first game walkthrough for part of the game just to get you into the system but it's not complicated it might look it when you see all the pieces you think good god but it's not complicated it really isn't it's a very simple but very streamlined system like all, like all games you've got to learn the rules and you've got to be all fair with them but there isn't a huge amount to learn um, and of course the rule book is as you would expect it's beautifully laid out explains everything you know it's 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 a work of art in itself uh this one runs to what's it, 40 something is it yeah for if you count this 44 pages i'm gonna but cover now trade cars there you can see a picture there and part of the map with various tokens laid out i don't know what the hell they've got a massive pile like that for because I can't see what you'd need that for, but there, there you go. It's just for pictures, I suppose. Right, so that's the rule books and the starter rule book. What else do we get? We'll get some more cards. Now these are, oh, these are all copies, so I'll just get more. We've got our calamity resolution chart because each turn you're likely to draw uh, some sort of... Um, calamity um there's minor calamities which are tradable i'll explain that later but you've got tempest squandered wealth city riot city in flames tribal conflict minor uprising banditry and coastal migration and then it tells you what you have to do to resolve that then we have the major calamities volcano uh, eruption or earthquake or we mentioned the volcanoes uh, treachery Famine, non-tradable, that one's tradable. Slave revolt, flood, you know, when we talked about them cities built on floodplains. Uh, superstition, civil war, that is an absolute nasty one, civil war. Barbarian hordes, cyclone, epidemic, another nasty one. Tyranny, uh, civil disorder, corruption, iconoclism and heresy, regression and piracy. Was there, uh, oh yes, famine, yeah. There's some nasty ones which means you lose a lot of population and some of your cities such as in the civil war will actually go to the, another player you'll flip you'll take your counters away your city and army counters away so some of them and replace them with uh, an opponents so that is really bad news on the other side we've got a bit of a tech tree really civilization advances and strategy explorer these are all the cards what the cost what the worth some of them have benefits when you buy other cards and it shows you the tech tree as you go across obviously get more expensive as you move across the cheaper ones are down this side and for instance mysticism costs you 50. it leads to monuments which cost 180 which leads to what's this wonder of the world 290 big monstrous card that okay and so on but you don't have to buy that and then that and then that 
No, no, no. You can buy them in any order you want. I and mean, if, if you've got the money, you can you can get that and not bother with that. It's, it doesn't matter. But that would be the logical sequence if you were going, and um, if you were if following how civilization advanced, though, as they foresee how civilization advanced. Now, I told you about trading cards. Right. And here we are. There's some trading cards. Now in the old game, I don't need that. In the old game, you had trading cards, but you didn't have this many. Now, let's just tip the band off this. I'll put them to one side. Right. You've got trading cards of various values. For instance, this is bone. On its own, it's worth one. But if you look here, if you have two of them, you can change that, turn that in for a set. It's worth four points, nine points for three, 16 for four, and so on, up to a maximum of 64 if you've got eight cards with bone. Um, and all the ones go together. And then you've also got ochre, which is also worth one. You've got clay which is also worth one and so on and so forth now the number ones they're fine because there's no nasties in there there's no bad events but once you get to number two you've got a non-tradable one there oh, I'll put it down so you can see it. this is the volcanic eruption it's a major calamity it's non-tradable you can't get rid of it which means you have to take it so somewhere on your board, if you're near a volcano, you have to destroy a city. And if you're not near a volcano, then it's an earthquake, I think. But we'll, we'll say maybe not. But so they're in the game and you never know when they're going to come because they've got the same backs as all the other cards for now in the early rounds. You don't know they're coming. And then you've got slightly more valuable goods, for instance, here. We've got wax that goes up to 128. What else have we got? Papari. Papari. Is that the uh, is that the plural of papyrus? I don't know. That goes up to 128. That's two. Then we've got look in two. Then we've also got a tempest, a minor calamity. So you could draw that, and again you don't know because it's the same back. You're not going to see. Then we've got iron, and so on and so forth, and it goes through to for you've got nine packs. Nine packs of these cards, um, from one through to nine, which is which is ideal. So all these cards you will pick up. Well, how do you pick them up? You say. Well, every city you've got, you will these trays. These come with again the six, the six of them. I look past them, but. These cards fit in basically in, in the racks. And you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you've got four cities, you'll take one card from each. One, number one, one, number two, one, number three, one, number four. And you just take the top card. Don't matter what it is, you don't know what it is. It might even be a, uh, it might even be one what uh, is a bad one. And you can see it coming out. Can I show that? Let's see if I can find one. But uh, you just take them like that. That's how, by adding cities, that's how you get trade cards. And you have to have trade cards because without trade cards, you can't raise enough cash to buy to buy the um, civilization advances, which you need to progress your civilization. Now you can use these trade cards and trade with other nations. You know, there's a, but there's a rule for what you do. You can only trade a minimum of three cards, up to as many as you like, but a minimum of three. You have to say what one of the three cards is. For instance, somebody's, say Rome's asking for wheat. And you can say, well, I've got wheat. One of the cards is wheat. The total value of the cards are, let's say, I don't know, nine. Like I say, bone, there'll be three, then nine. Um. And then and the, and the Roman player say, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll swap it then for three, blah, 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 whatever you want. 
Now, the player might slip in a crippler. You know one of those um, nasty calamities? If it's tradable, he could slip that in the hand. It's still right, it's, it's still getting his it's still getting his um, his weight and the hand is still worth nine because obviously the other card. But the third card, he slips in a crippler with a, a nasty uh, a nasty event which is gonna have to uh, he's gonna to have to sort out himself, he's, he's gonna end up with a, a nasty event. So trading can be a bit uh, can be a bit naughty. So that, that's the trade cards, not a stack of them, and there's all these these trays to, to keep them in. That leads us on to a civilization card. Um, there's just a few. Just a few. Start off with the cheapest ones. Astro navigation. It's going to cost you 80. It gives you certain advantages. Oh, ships. Oh, I never said that, did I? On the map, when you move all land units, you can only move to an adjacent space. One space. At sea, a ship can carry units up to four spaces. But where you see these darker areas, they're not, like the Western Mediterranean there, they're not navigable, unless you have astro navigation, and then you can, you can move through them open sea areas. So that would give you quite a big advantage if you're a seafaring nation. And there is loads of these cards, and there's more than one of any one, so that more people can get it. Drama and poetry, deism. What else is there here? Music, written record. And so it goes on as we go through all the cards. So we get to, you know, like cultural ascendancy. That's going to cost you 280, but it's worth six victory points. Um, and it gives you a various um, health and various advances and advantages. So the web, you've got to have them. You've got to buy them because you've got to have them to to progress in uh, in the game so you need to spend money on all these types of things and gather up you saw you needed to have so many cards so let's put them to one side we haven't finished yet so you can see if you and these are big cards as well you know there's my hand it's the big cards yeah um, not tarot card size but not far off and then um, well, in fact, they are tarot cards, really. So, again, you know, when we're saying about the, the, the nation faction cards, you've got to find space for these. And you could have, I don't know, I think it's, I can't remember how many, I don't know if there is a maximum with these. But you've got these to put out, you've got your trade cards and smaller ones, so you need a lot of room um, to do that. Now, let's go to one of the factions. See if I can find all the bits from what we're Here we go. Have... Oh, another one. I forget. I missed one back. There's a six pack here. There's another one here. So it's more to find space for. Here we've got. What we've got here? No, that's the two different ones. Very similar colour. Right here. Yeah. Come on. Get okay, good. Oh, what are you looking for? Yeah, there we go. There's tricks. Right, I've bagged mine up. Um, I've bagged mine up just to make life easier. Oh, can you see it? You're not going to see very clear in that glare, so I'll get some out. But, there's a ship tile. And there's a city tile. This is for Carthage down here. This this civilization. So let's zoom in a bit. These tokens, there's nothing on them. Just what they are. You, you, you have nothing to read on them. You don't have to squint to see what it is. 
If it's rectangular like that, it's a ship. Circles, city, and if I get the other bag, the square ones are population units. Easy peasy. These have got elephants on, be nice and easy to see. Oh, we have to put the camera on. There. On the reverse side, if you remember me telling that these also count as treasury, you've got some amphora to show that when it's that way up and it's on the left hand side of your, of your nation card, it's treasury. So if they had one city, those two units would be flipped over to the amphora side and uh, they would become treasury. It, when you spend that, if you, for instance, to buy a ship costs two, you, or either two population or two, two wealth. So, if you bought a ship, that would go to wherever you, you were buying it from, you wanted to place it, then they would go back into your stock again, keep your stock going. Now a city, to build a city, let's say, where can you say, let's go to where you can see. Up there at Carthage. Now, Carthage can take up to three population units, Thapsus can take three, Numidia can take two. Now, if you've got, for, let's just say for ease of sake, there's three here and there's three there. If you want to build a city in Carthage, you need six units. So you would have a pile of six, and at the end of the term, when it tells you on the sequence of events, you would remove them six, put them back in your stock, take a city token, one of your nine city tokens, and you would put it on Carthage. That's a way of building your city. You don't have to worry about that three, because now that city uh, is basically taking up all the uh, goodness from that area. But for every city you have, you have to have two units to support it. I.e. these are the farmers out in Numidia and Thapsus who are supplying that city, keeping it fed. And I presume the city responds in kind with luxury items and goods, etc. going the other way. So they'll be trade. But for every city you have, you must have at least two units. They don't have to be next to it, each other, like this. You could have one here and one at the other end of a bloody map. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got two units for every city, that's fine. Your cluster's been in, uh, you know, the city's fine. If you, if you don't have enough units, to support the city, the city is reduced. And what would happen is you'd take the city away from Carthage and you'd simply put three units back there because there's three. If you were really unlucky and you say you were in Numidia, you'd only get two back. And if you're in a city where place where it's only one, you'd only get one unit back after it's cost you six to build. You can build a city like here in can you see that? There. In Tunisia, although there's no city space, you can build one, but it would cost you 12 population to build a city. You could do it, and maybe at some point you're getting so low on um, cash or something, or you need to really, you desperately need your city there just to get these 12 back, because you know that you're going to be paying taxes next turn, and you need all them for your for your stock and you build a city there so you can do that but it's an expensive way of doing it but sometimes um, it, it, it's worth it you, you may need to do something like that just to simply build up your your stock and I think there is other tokens but nothing I don't think that is really I need to show you at the moment now Oh, I didn't show you these. These are the trade cards as well. These are water, which are worth zero. And if you're playing in a multiplayer game, you could slip one of them in as well in your trading. It's worth absolutely bugger all, but they don't know that. But to play so that's why I've kept them separate. In a solo play for me, there's not a lot of point me putting something like that in. It's, um, I can't, you know, I can't con myself, can I? What's the point of that? So, but in a multiplayer game, yeah, you could have a, a water card in there. These. You get a lot of these as well. Let me move them to the top of the side. These. These are on them cards. You'll see. Oh, this, that's handy. This is one. 
for instance here, you see it's got, oh you would if it went in four, you see the little pattern on there with a five. That helps to buy towards another card. Well, you get one of these out, what's got five on it, there's one there. Look. Put that with your, something else to put with your buddy nation board. So you'll get a build up of these. So when you come to buy cards, if you've got a selection of these, you can uh, use them to help you towards purchasing some more civilization cards. That's another little thing we put in this game that wasn't in the original. You have to sort of keep track of that. But there's a damn sight more cards in this game, so they're giving you these tokens. There's, there's these red ones, there's, uh, there's the yellow ones, there's the blue, the blue ones, and so on. It one for each, each sort. Now, I think that pretty much covers covers it as a basic introduction on, on what the game's about. What are you trying to achieve? Well, you're not trying to country, achieve world domination. Well, you are to a degree, but that's by building an empire. It's not warfare. Warfare is involved because nations expand and if you bump up against another nation eventually you're going to have to fight for resources uh, battle is very very simple easy to resolve you don't need no dice no dice in this game um, it's just a case of you remove a unit and then remove another unit remove one of theirs you move one of yours until you're down to either there's nobody the enemy left or you get down to the the value of the land if it's for instance if it's a value of three land once you damn to if you've got two of your units and the enemy's got one of his units well that's three that's fine they can cohabit co 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 quite happily but the land can support three units the fact that it's two of yours and one of somebody else's is irrelevant so you can do that there are cards that come out that uh, for instance agriculture that three becomes a four but it only for your unit so if it's a three you can actually keep four units there without having to lose any when we do the population removal due to um, overpopulation. So there's other little things like that that come into the game, add little nuances, um, etc. But it is all about advancing your civilization. You're not going to get very far if all you do is spend all your time using up your valuable resources, your, your population units in warfare. You're just going to help all the other players who are not involved in warfare because they'll just merrily go along collecting trade cards and uh, and uh, civilization cards, and they'll they'll leave you in the wake. So it, it's not a game for domination in in the military sense. You you're trying to dominate economically. You're trying to push forward to create the best civilization that you can possibly get. Remember, you've only got fifty five. Mil uh, they're not military units, 55 population units. So you're not going to be able to cover the whole map, even if you wanted to. Um, you're going to have to control your little area or the area you decided is important to you. It's probably your home area and the area surrounding it, the Carthage. They'll want to probably sit, control all this. They might want to move up into Sardinia and Corsica, maybe across to the Belarus, maybe across here, maybe into southern Spain. But other than that, they're not going to be able to venture much further, really. And remember, you're going to have other people coming down to uh, give you a hard time. You know, they're not going to just leave you alone. They'll be expanding as well. You're going to have the Egyptians coming this way. You're going to have the Iberians coming down from Spain. You know, you've got uh, you've got a lot on your plate. A lot of things to think about. And this game does take a long time. The first turns, I mean, just a few units on the board. Oh, there's a zoom by. But when you get later on and you start getting lots of places, lots of cities, lots of trade cards, trading going on, uh, buying civilization cards, and everything else, it, the, the turns start to really take a long time. It won't be for everybody, but there you go. Um, this game does, by the way, predate the computer game civilization. This was around, not this, but the, the uh, Avalon Hill version predates any of the computer games, so Sid Meier's and all that. Whether he got inspiration from 
Avalon Hills game. Uh, I've no way of knowing, but uh, the the board game came first. The computer game came afterwards. So I think I think that's about it for this review. I've just given you a basic overview of the components and and ideas. Um, it's an excellent game, but you need a hell of a lot of space to set it up. I, I set it up when I played I played a little trial game, and. Uh, I, set, I had to set another table up to the side for the AST, the Archaeological Succession Table, for the census, for all the cards. Oh, it just, it, it, it was awful. Now, you can play with less players, but you can only use parts of the map. If you play with two players or three players, you're restricted to just a small area of the map. I don't like that. If you've got a beautiful big map like this, I want to be able to use it all. And if that means using all nine nations, well, so be it. That's what I'll do. Um, you know, you've got to, you do, but if you, if you want to play a two or three player game, which is going to be quicker and shorter, that's fine, but you, you have to realise you're going to be limited to how much of the map, map you can use. Okay, I'll stop now, I think I've gone on long enough, what's this? 33 minutes on this bit, and I was a few minutes on the one before. So, I'll stop now, thanks for watching. Uh, next one up, um, I shall do a quick, similar review of... Um, Commands and Colours in Space, the Red Alert game. So that will probably be the next video. So thanks for watching. I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye for now.